Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving and today I am starting to weave on the turned Atwater Bronson towels that I have warped. So as a reminder, this is a uh, 16 towels in four different colorways and what I did was I tied on each um, successive colorway to the previous color before I even started weaving. So I was able to beam the whole warp um, all at once. Uh, so I have started weaving it and this is um, one of the towels and I thought I would show you how to be um, ergonomically correct in um, throwing the shuttle and making it so that it is faster and more efficient. So let's get started. Okay, so I thought I would give a um, little bit different perspective to this project. And um, so I'm not sure how well you can see it in the video, but this uh, weave structure gives a horizontal float and a vertical float. And uh, there are two floats that create the line and they step uh, up through um, going from larger to smaller and larger to smaller and you can see it better once it's washed um, so this is one that I did a while back in the same pattern and uh, you can see that you've got uh, it kind of collapses once you wet finish it and so you've got uh, some vertical uh, floats and horizontal floats and depending on um, the color sequence uh, you can see so like on the the ones where the orange on the orange um, you can't really see the floats very well but then when you get um, alternating colors you can see them quite well so but I wanted to uh, be able to show you the what I use uh, or how I do the um, split uh, tail tucking or split ply tail tucking. So what I do is I leave uh, enough to tuck my tail but instead of tucking the entire tail I'm going to pull this back to about where um, I want my tail to go. And then I take a, a needle and I untwist the plies. And since this is 2-8 uh, cotton, um, there's only two plies, but if it was 4-8 uh, cotton, you would uh, split it into two plies in each um, ply, two threads in each ply. Now, once I split it, I'm going to just drop one of them and the other one I'm going to feed back through my shed and I like to um, place it again and then I'm going to wrap it around that outside uh, thread and then back through the shed just like I would if I was tucking my entire tail. And I go um, a, one or two threads beyond the one that I split it from. And what that does is that gives you a plot or a, a secure tail that is only the same number of plies as the original thread. So it's going to give you the same thickness as the original thread. And as you can see um, down here, you can't even see where I did it um, once it's cut off and especially once it's wet finished. So now we will go ahead and do the other one and I will alternate to the other side and do the same thing. So I leave a tail 
And if I was doing this with tucking the entire tail, I would keep my shed open. I would find the outside thread, wrap it around, and then tuck it back in. But you can see that leaves a, a bigger um, warp or weft than what I like. So we'll take that back out. We'll pull this out to where I want it to be tucked to. I'll untwist my plies and I use the needle to get in between those plies and then just untwist it and pull it apart. Go back through my shed, place it, and then go around this outside thread and back in. Okay. So now we can go ahead and proceed with weaving. That's upside down and backwards. All right. So you can see when I put the shuttle into the sh next shed, I have my finger on the end of the shuttle and that lets me push it through the shed. Then when I catch it, I catch it such that I can put my finger on this end of the shuttle and that way I am set up to do the next shed. And sometimes I don't quite get it through.
so we'll go ahead and advance the work. And start weaving our border, our hem allowance. So this is just a uh, plain weave. So uh, the border is two inches and what I do to make the hemming a little bit easier is when I have woven um, a third of, well at this end, a third of the border, I'm going to insert a pick of um, a mercerized, I think that this is, might be 5-2 cotton, um, but I'm going to insert this to act as a, um, a fold line, and I'm going to insert it with the next pick. Uh, so that was one, so now I need to do two. And I just kind of hook it into um, my shuttle and then carefully pull it out. And then I will beat these two in together. And then when I am doing my hem, um, I can pull this uh, mercerized cotton thread out and it will leave a small gap there where that pick is. And it will make a line that I can fold to and fold on. So um, I've demonstrated this in the past in um, another video. And I will post a link to uh, how it is used up in the right hand corner. And so now I'm going to finish my plain weave hem twenty-eight. So that should be about two inches. And yes, it is exactly two inches. So now I'm going to insert a, a divider between the two towels. And I've just got some uh, eight four cotton here that I'm going to insert. And this will just um, separate the cowl and provide a cutting, oops, well, that didn't work, provide a cutting line. All right, there we go. And now we're going to do start the next towel and um, so we'll do uh, two-thirds of our border which is 28 picks we'll insert our um, fold line pick and then uh, 12 additional picks and then we'll start our pattern okay so as you can see I have gotten to the end of this uh, warp and I you can see where I have tied on to the next colorway and um, I wanted to show you because I have had a couple of the knots come I don't know if they've come undone uh, but I found that the um, the old warp Ha would have a kind of a knot of the uh, adjoining color tangled up in the knot and then uh, the new warp which is this warp it's kind of backwards um, but uh, this warp is like the knot came undone 
Um, so I'm not sure really what happened there. Maybe I didn't get the knot tight and it slipped out. Um, but fortunately, uh, I have been able to fix them. And I wanted to kind of show you uh, what I did. So here's one right here. And you can see, oh boy, that, yeah. Um, you can see that I basically made two knots with a small section of uh, of the warp yarn in between those two because I had to shorten up um, these each one of the ends um, but I tied the knots the exact same way and I've trimmed those tails and I'm just weaving very slowly on this last uh, little bit. I've only got, oh, I think I can maybe do five or six inches more um, before I start running over knots. So the knots are in various locations because you can't tie them all exactly the same. Um, but uh, that's okay. Uh, I'll have probably, oh, I'm going to say I'll probably have three inches of waist here, which is way better than the 30 inches of waist that I would normally have um, if I did not tie my warp on. So this is actually the end of the second warp. Uh, this, this one here is the end of the second warp. This is the beginning of the third warp. And um, so I am able to get uh, a full four tails out of each warp, plus um, probably uh, two thirds of another towel. And I can use those as either dishcloths or um, I can make handbags out of them. Uh, I'll, I'll utilize it uh, definitely. So I just wanted to show you that and we'll go ahead and start weaving the rest of this and you can watch that. I've kind of backed my tension off a little tiny bit um, just so that I'm not putting as much strain on these knots. And one of the things I want to do is I want to be sure to change my shed before I push my beater back uh, so that when the knots, if the knots kind of catch on each other, uh, these little tufts, that the beater will help separate them. And I'm going to do it very gently. Um, so we'll go ahead and start the next color. So you can see when I change the sheds that uh, some of the knots kind of catch on each other. But for the shed that has the openings in it, it's not too bad. It's the sheds where all of, uh, or half the threads come up and half stay down. So you can see right here and here and here, a little bit there and right there. See, those are so uh, lightly caught that just me touching it freed them up. Um, but when I push my beater back, the, uh, the reed will help separate those. And I'm just going to be very careful and keep my eyes on uh, the threads that should be at the top. So on um, on my treadles two and one, uh, every uh, other uh, every there's one thread in each dent that is up. So if I kind of scan through, I can see if any have maybe popped. Oops. 
so that is um, the last repeat or the last treadle of that repeat and I have um, some knots coming up right here which is just about an inch from where my fell line is I've got some knots here and here uh, so I think what I'll go ahead and do is uh, I'll do the hem allowance and then um, we'll put in our spacer for to get over the knots I've probably pushed this about as far as I'm going to be able to push it. Um, I'm weaving over some of the knots, which is fine because those knots would be in the hem allowance, but um, it's getting harder to uh, weave around all the fuzz and knots and when I the more you work it uh, the more likely is it is that one of those will come become abraded and come undone and we don't want that um, so I think what I will do is uh, that and tuck my tail and now I'm going to put in um, a cardboard spacer okay so I just um, have some cardboard spacers here uh, that I salvaged from the recycling bin and I'll go ahead and uh, put those in a plain leaf shed. just about one inch wide maybe a little bit they're the width of my ruler so however wide that was looks like it's about one inch ahead and put in a few picks of scrap yarn just to secure everything. We are ready to start our next colorway.
Hey there, weavers. Welcome back. So I have finished up the 16 towels that we have been working on, and I just wanted to show you what that looks like on my cloth beam. So you can see my cloth beam down there is quite full. Uh, I have, I would guess it's probably about uh, two inches. Um, and I figured we have uh, 19, a little under 19 yards of cloth on there. So uh, I am ready to cut it off and uh, unroll it from the cloth beam and start hemming, which is going to be a lot of work. So here we go. Alrighty. So I am going to cut just uh, beyond the last pick. This is always a fun part of weaving. And I'm gonna grab this last out there so my cloth or my warp rod does not go flying. Maybe I'll just do that. All right. So here we go. And here is what 19 yards of towels look like after it's been piled onto the floor. So before I uh, start in on uh, hemming these, I need to wash them, which means I need to um, secure the ends. And before I can do that, I need to make a little bit of room in my space. And that's going to entail doing some cleanup. As you can see, I have 19 yards worth of dust bunnies also. So um, yeah, this isn't the part that they tell you about when you're learning to weave, um, is the cleanup. So I have um, cleanup on the floor. I have bobbins that I need to uh, wind off. And um, then I need to wash the, the towels and cut them apart and hem them. So that's not the glamorous part, um, the part that we all like doing so much, which is the weaving part, but it is a necessary part of the process. So I try to think of it as part of the weaving and just get on with it. So. There you go. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks and happy weaving. Here we have the final results of my towels. And you can see the pattern has really popped once we wet finished. So um, the towels turned out to be about 24 and a half inches uh, long by 18 inches wide and uh, interestingly enough this colorway ended up being a little bit longer than the others. Um, each towel is about 26 inches long by 18 inches wide and I'm not really sure why. Um, I don't know if it's that I wasn't beating as hard. Um, I don't think so. 
but you can see that the the squares are a little bit more elongated um, it could be a factor of the makeup of the yarn um, i used in each batch i used uh, a combination of cotylin which is 60 percent cotton and 40 percent linen um, and cotton 100 percent cotton so some of the colors uh, like the the off-white that's cotylin um, and i believe that the rust is cotylin um, and the blue so the two blues are 100 percent cotton i believe i'll have to check that uh, but like this one, um, this is the cotylin, this is cotylin, um, this is the cotton, and this is, this color is cotton. So I'm not sure why this, this particular colorway turned out to not shrink as much, but it did. And that is what happens sometimes when you are weaving. Uh, you get varying results, um, depending on the makeup of the yarns. So anyways, uh, I have delivered um, the ones that were ordered and the remaining ones will go in my Etsy shop. So if you would like to uh, purchase any of these, you can go to Etsy.com and search for Tangled Webs with an S weaving and uh, I will have them up there. I hope you enjoyed watching me weave these. I sure enjoyed weaving them, and it was a lot of fun to see the colors uh, come out. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, hit the uh, notification button, and uh, comment. Thanks, and happy weaving.